Our last feature story segment today combines aquaculture and hydroponics. It's called aquaponics. The Aztecs in Mexico may have been some of the first to try it. You'll meet a Midwestern entrepreneur who first looked at aquaponics as a hobby, but he's ramped up his operation since. Market to Market's Josh Bittner explains. You may not envision fish tanks on the prairie as the best place to look for added value amidst large agricultural operations. Nevertheless, some folks in America's heartland are giving it a try. Whether it's a hobby developed during the off season or an entrepreneurial foray into niche markets, sustainable, self-sufficient aquaponics systems are hatching in some unexpected locations. Though history suggests a rudimentary form of aquaponics existed in ancient civilizations, the modern blending of aquaculture and hydroponics has increased steadily since the late 1990s. Industry standards were developed at the University of the Virgin Islands, where the warm climate facilitated large-scale operations. Further north, though, the use of indoor aquaponics as a hedge against extreme summer heat doesn't seem that far-fetched to some. The symbiotic closed-loop method offers the opportunity to turn a small profit by growing crops typically cultivated in other regions of the country. Aquaponics is popular as a concept now and is going to be popular as an industry practice very soon. I would say in the next 20 years, we're going to have a lot of our produce in the Midwest coming from aquaponics. Higher education has continued research into the science of this hybrid discipline. Promising scenarios have emerged for one-time curiosities to evolve into viable green operations. Aquaponics is a synergistic relationship between plants and fish. Basically, you feed the fish food. That protein then breaks down into uh, nitrate that can be used by the plants, and the plants strip the nitrate from the water, cleans up the water for the fish, and then the whole cycle continues. An emphasis on education and conservation are central to the mission of the Leopold Center for Sustainable Agriculture. Located on the campus of Iowa State University, the center seeks to reduce negative environmental impacts associated with farming and develop new revenue streams for producers. Leopold Center funding supports extension outreach efforts like those of fisheries and aquaculture specialist Alan Patillo. He and other instructors educate and advise students and the public on the science, economics, and marketing aspects of sustainable aquaculture. A lot of people wonder how do you grow plants in water uh, whenever you can overwater a plant and it starts to die. Well, the reason is we maintain a, a higher oxygen concentration in the water than you would be able to maintain in the soil. You get very fast growth rates out of the plants. Uh, but you also get two products, fish and plants, and uh, the combination of those two can make you more profitable. All kinds of plants can be grown in this environment, though herbs and leafy greens currently are the most common crop. And for those lured to try their luck raising fish, a certain African species just might be the perfect catch. Okay, he's a good size. Right now we're using the Nile tilapia, and that's a very popular species to use for aquaponics. Uh, it's very easy to grow. Uh, it has a lot of tolerance to poor water quality, which for a beginning fish farmer might uh, be an issue for them. Oh, he's a TV star today. Iowa State Extension helps local producers kickstart operations that seek value in the spaces between the traditional monoculture of corn and soybeans. Earl and Jeff Hafner operate Early Morning Harvest near Panora, Iowa. The father-son team says for generations in their family, farming is the only life they've ever known. Firmly rooted in their role as stewards of the land, the Hafners began to incorporate their vision of sustainability over a decade ago. The whole farm's organic. Small grains, the wheat, the rye, the buckwheat, corn, soybeans, and also the pasture and forage for the cattle because the cattle's organic. We have to protect the environment. You know, every farmer out here, you know, the soil is his life. You know, the plants and the animals are his life. Anything that destroys the environment would st destroy his livelihood or his kids' future's livelihood. After discovering aquaponics, Hafner helped pass his free time while serving in the military overseas by reading up on the subject. Upon returning to Iowa, he expected to simply start a new hobby. 
what intrigued me the most is I, grandma was a big gardener. I always liked the garden, uh, however you plant your garden. And as most people know, then you have to go plant your corn and soybeans. You come back 30, 40 days later and you about know what your garden looks like. Noting the crucial value of water during his stint in the Middle East validated the importance of conservation to Hafner. And aquaponics presented an opportunity to keep precious resources from going to waste. What I like about it is technically the only way water leaves this greenhouse is evaporation and transpiration. And that's the sustainable part of it. As water, we're in a drought now. As the world population gets bigger, water is the huge issue. We've been blessed here in the Midwest. We might experience some of how tough it is down in Texas and some of those places. After receiving a grant from Iowa State to continue his work in aquaponics, Hafner took a hard look at the economics of the endeavor. If you wanted to raise cattle, you went to the banker and said, I'm going to raise 100 head of cattle. He knew there's industry standards. He knew the numbers. And when I was looking at the numbers, it was tough to find numbers on it. So that's where I said, I'll, I'll open my books up. And my first year was rough. Despite initial hurdles, early morning harvest pressed on, learning from its mistakes. Refining methods over time allowed the Hafners to share their newfound expertise with others. If you have a CSA and it's a two-thirds, three-fourths of a year type operation, you'd, you could add a small aquaponics greenhouse to help fill the gap, maybe keep your labor year-round that way. The free-flowing exchange of ideas has helped this growing field build momentum. For those dipping their toes into new markets that could be lucrative, Iowa State offers online resources as well. The Agricultural Marketing Resource Center and the National Market Maker site present information on business planning and connecting with buyers. If you're a small producer, you can find all those people within the community that are interested in getting your product and they can see you. One of the nice things about aquaponics is that you can start very small and scale it up. Find your customer, find your client that's going to want your product. And as you've seen in this kind of system, you can create extremely high value products. For Market to Market, I'm Josh Bittner. You can watch this story again on aquaponics on our Farm Week website, Facebook page, or YouTube. The website is farmweek.msucares.com. We'll also have a link to the Market to Market website where you can see the story as well as read the entire script. Remember, YouTube and Facebook fans see Farm Week stories first on Friday.